I thought I would share with you some of the learning outcomes from this year's SIV courses and the latest SIV manoeuvres. The first one I'm going to share with you is the two-stage stall. This is a stall where the glider flies backwards but without the glider folding the tips back in a horseshoe and it lessens the chances of getting cravats and twisting. So to do one, the pilot stalls the glider. As it gently drops back, the pilot releases the brakes and quickly reintroduces the brakes, keeping them underneath the wing as it flies backwards in a back fly. So here we can see the pilot starting to stall the glider, fully stalling, and then as it drops back, releases the brakes, now reintroduces the brakes as it's dropping backwards. Now once the pilot's underneath the wing, they maintain that brake position, flying backwards, clearing any cravat, before gently releasing the brakes and flying away. But as always, it's not quite as easy as it looks. So here we can see Burkai, he applies the brakes, fully stalling it now. The glider drops back, he releases, reintroduces the brakes to halfway, goes back up, back down, everything to maintain that glider flying gently backwards. But look, the glider is beautifully calm and the pilot's hands are moving up and down in order to maintain that position before he releases the brakes fully, allowing the glider to dive and fly in its balanced flight. So you can see, there's lots of rapid hand movements in order to keep that glider flying gently backwards and clearing any cravats that you may have. But it's a quite a simple thing to do, and it's a very beautiful thing to learn. And it doesn't expose you to the wingtips, clapping hands, twisting, and possible cravats you get from a normal full stall. So it's definitely something you want to really learn to do properly. Pilots flying high aspect ratio, two liners with race harnesses really do not want to fully stall and have the wingtips clap hands, risking cravatting and twisting. So the key is to drop it back into a several stage stall, having the glider flying backwards, clearing any cravats before easing up and releasing the brakes back to balance flight. But while doing these maneuvers, Sometimes the glider can snatch and dive, but if the pilot is very quick, brakes really hard, stopping it from doing a deflation, the glider will be perfectly all right. So the key is speed and reaction, breaking that dive. Stabilize the back fly before releasing the brakes and getting back to balance flight. Wing overs are great fun and they're a fantastic way to learn about the roll bank stability of your wing. So the key is using the dive and the speed to accelerate your round in the bank before then diving straight through the bottom of the dive, maximum speed before applying the brakes and rolling over the wing again. With wing overs, it's all about understanding the timing, the braking, the weight shifting, the diving, and the rolling. And the key is to separate the two. Dive, roll, dive, roll. And that enables you to get it right, to get the rhythm right. When wing overs start to get big, the most common thing is an outside tug. And it's important, if that happens, keep turning the same way. Don't let the deflation turn you. So here's an example. The pilot drops into a wing over beautifully. She's got fantastic weight shift. The glider's rolling beautifully, balanced perfectly. In she goes, outside tuck. Now look at how quickly the tuck takes you. Straight into the deflation side. The pilot needs to apply outside brake hard in order to stop that developing into a nose down spiral. But as she does so, she gently drops into a stall and releases and dives. Everything's okay, but she's a little bit too low. Outside deflations are common, 
especially in spin releases. So if it happens, when the deflation comes in, do not let that turn you. Keep turning the same way. And that way the deflation comes out and you can fly as normal. But be careful practicing wingovers. Make sure you start off gently and smoothly, getting the right balance of weight shift, break, dive, weight shift, break, and dive. And don't get too big until you're absolutely ready for it. But when they are big and you're not ready for them, just 360 the same way and bleed all that energy out, climbing, diving, and getting back to balance flight. Now, no one wants to pull their reserve. But if you ever get in a sticky situation, you need to throw it. Here is one, an auto rotation, not good for throwing reserves. It's key, if you have the chance, let it go into a spiral nose down before deploying your reserve. That way you know it's going to come out and open straight away. But sometimes you don't have that liberty. Sometimes you just have to throw it out. If you do, make sure you invest a lot of time in throwing it out to your feet or to the outside of the rotation just get it out and make sure it clears the glider but once it's out the glider is going to be flying with its own speed so get the main in best to pull in the d's because pulling the d's is quick and stops the airspeed of the main glider and stops it going into the reserve and it also gives you a little something in reserve here's an example of a pilot doing a nice backfly, but unfortunately his reserve comes out. No problem, it's just a standard deployment. Get your Ds in, but he misses that opportunity and he starts pulling one. Now, that's fine, you can do that if you want. You've got to stop the main from flying. But look, the pilot's not really pulling it in very quickly. It's very slow. So all this time it's hitting the reserve and can cause problems. Now it's going nuts. OK, so now we've expeded it up because it's a bit boring. But that wing is now rotating heavily, bashing in to the reserve, something you really don't want to do. So keep pulling the main in hand over hand over hand really fast until the glider is in properly with no interference of the reserve, allowing the reserve to do its job and descend vertically down. So eventually the pilot starts to pull it in properly and it starts to not interfere. But it can quickly go live again and reintroduce itself and the speed and hit a reserve, which is what you do not want. So key is get the main in and avoid that sort of shenanigans. So here's another pilot doing an intentional reserve deployment. Uh, the intention is she's going to cut away, and she does beautifully. So now she's descending under the reserve. All is great. But there's one problem. If you look carefully, you can see she's twisted. She's got loads of twists in her reserve, so it wasn't packed perfectly. But another thing, when people throw reserves they don't understand, is... It's connected at two points with no bar in between. So as soon as the reserve goes out, those two points go together. And if your head's in front of the risers, they will push your head forwards. So put your hands up, grab the risers, pull them apart, get your head back and get comfortable. So then you can see what's going on and do a proper PLF. Or if it's a steerable reserve, steer it in and land. Paragliding is great. And if you want to make the most out of it, it is a really good idea to get to know your wing. Do an SIV course or just gently do a pilotage course, but get to know all aspects of your wing in roll, in dive, in pitch, and just enjoy it. Because the more you throw the glider around, the more you relax with it, the more confident and comfortable you'll feel with the wing when you're thermaling or scratching low close to a cliff. 
You should aim to be at the stage where you can be looking around whilst controlling your glider, focusing on the positive aspects of coring or scratching close or hooking into thermals really tightly. Because the more you know your wing, the more you'll be able to fly it to its maximum potential. And that's where doing courses, practicing roll bank and throwing a glider around really helps you get the most out of this fantastic sport. And if anything happens, be fast to react, but equally quick to back off if you don't need the brake input.